Hi, this is Savannah Saunders from The Wonderful World of Dance, and today I'm so excited to be talking with Jon Behejo, whose name I'm sure I haven't pronounced properly, uh, who is the principal dancer of Semper Opera Ballet, and he's coming to London with a company to perform three works by William Forsyth in a triple bill at Sadler's Wells. So, hello, thank you so much for joining us. Hi. Hi. Now, Please pronounce your name properly for all of our listeners because I think I did a terrible job then. Oh, that was quite good. Well, Yom Bayejo. Fantastic. That was quite good. Yeah. So, um, you're actually originally from Spain, is that right? Yep. So, tell me about where you grew up and what made you get involved in dance in the first place. So, I grew up in uh, San Sebastian, Basque Country, North Spain. Um, yeah, and I, I quite started, um, I mean, in early times, I think around three years old, and of course it wasn't my choice. It was uh, my mom's, who loved ballet, and she was taking some classes. And then I was of these kind of kids. I was just doing thousands of uh, extra activities after school. Yeah, so one of those it was ballet from really really early times. And yeah, it was a certain point that uh, uh, it was becoming a little bit more serious, and then. Yeah, I have to choose, and we made the choice. Uh, moved to Madrid for a proper education there, and from there on, just career slowly start to pop one way, the other way. Yeah. And was there any point where you thought this is, or what was the point where you thought this is something that I want to do as a career, as a profession? I mean, there was not a specific time or day or a situation. I think it was just a matter of uh, facts happening in life uh, that slowly put me there and it didn't really disturb me to do them. Uh, so I think that's why in the end I was like, yeah, uh, that's what I'm actually I'm, I'm doing. Uh, it's not a, okay, I will do that or I will decide to do that or that. It just suddenly it happened, I was just doing that and um, I was enjoying them. And do you remember the first, because you grew up in, as you say, San Sebastian, um, did, do you remember the first time you encountered dance or did you see a show um, locally? What sort of inspired, what gave you the inspiration? Um, I mean, we went to see a few shows there, uh, of course. In Spain, there's uh, not a lot of stuff is coming there, but uh, we took, but I mean, good companies at the time. It was uh, Nacho's company was uh, emerging. Um, Russian true. ballet was coming, yeah. But uh, I don't remember any show that I was like, oh yeah, that's the point, a turning point that uh, okay, I want to be a dancer. Not at all. Um, I have to say, I, I, I'm a person uh, quite. Uh, Hard to be impressed. I mean, it's not taking wrong. It's, uh, I, I really enjoy a lot of people dancing, but I'm not really, I don't have a, a specific dancer that I'm following or a specific type of dance, or I'm quite open for that. So I don't have this turning point of, uh, okay, I watched this show or this dancer and uh, I want to do that. No, it was just happening slowly. So in this sort of natural evolution, you, you moved to Madrid and mm -hmm. uh, where did you train in Madrid? I was training with uh, Carmen Roche. Um, she was the wife from Victor Yate, so it's this, um, kind of same training. Quite a good training, I have to say. Uh, and then from there, she was having a small company, mm -hmm. let's say a young company. Uh, which suddenly I find myself at 16 working with uh, great choreographers. Uh, her talent was, uh, I mean, she was a fantastic teacher, but at the same time she could bring um, an extraordinary uh, choreographers. So finding myself 16 years old, having uh, work basically, uh, have the possibility to work with all these choreographers, um, travel around, you know, these kind of buses from... Uh, here to there, perform every night, wow. 16, 17 hours of bus, which was one of the best experiences. In terms of um, friendship, mm -hmm. which is called a company. Uh, I mean, we everybody work in a company, even we forgot sometimes, yeah? But uh, that's why it's called company. So I really have this period of time uh, as a really strong um, company team. And 
having the possibility to perform all these uh, fantastic works from, I don't know, Tony Fabre to uh, pieces from Nacho, from um, people from NDT, from people mm -hmm. from Foresight. So it was quite a, I find myself doing Romeo when I was 16. So it was kind of a great uh, beginning, yeah, let's say. That is quite an incredible beginning, as you say, you're 16 uh, yeah. and you're exposed to this incredible, incredible um, mm. range of acclaimed choreographers. It's, it's quite astounding mm. to hear that, actually. Very lucky. Super very, lucky. yeah, very lucky. And how, how do you think that sort of shaped your, you as a dancer and as a person and your expectations for what was to come next in your career? I mean, not because that happened, I was expecting uh, to just go from their own. Uh, that was kind of, uh, it was real, but uh, I was not just taking it as, uh, okay, you know, from there on, I'm just going to go on and on and on. Uh, this just happened to be like that for a couple of years. And yeah, after that, it was just, uh, you know, so, somehow the, the, uh, something that I put in my, in my rucksack. And yeah. then after years, you can... Uh, I always have it with me, so I, I can always use it, or I don't make sense. But uh, yeah, yeah, so sort of being able to draw on that experience and take it with yeah. you in your, into your mm. life. It yeah. was a huge experience, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and so what happened after you know this period of time that you? So from you there, um, I auditioned for uh, Nacho's company, oh, yeah? Nacho Duato. Mm -hmm. uh, I was there for for one year. And there, uh, at the same time, I met Aaron, which is our uh, former director at the moment. Uh, that's probably, I don't know, 14, 15 years ago. And yeah, then he just uh, told me that he was having this um, opening this company. Uh, well, taking actually the, the directorship. And yeah, I came here. I auditioned for it, uh, got the job. And yeah, I don't know. I just moved to Dresden with a, a hand luggage and a, basically a television that I bought at the time. It was a flat, <laughs> you know, my first flat television <laughs> that I earned with money. And I was like, okay, I need to travel. So I didn't know anything about Dresden. Um, but then I find out later in life um, that every decision that I make, if I have to think twice, mm -hmm. I'm just going to stick to the first choice. So you, yeah, you I, I can go around and uh, you know uh, I'm in the company now for uh, next next year will be my third 13th season which is quite a long time. Yeah. And of course I've been through uh, up and downs and downs and ups and it goes like that. And many times I was thinking oh maybe I just uh, I have to leave, I have to change, I have to But uh yeah, I think it's just part of the the journey. You need to fight for it, and I never have the um, the thought or the the straight thought. Okay, I will just leave the company. I always think twice, three, four times, and in the in the in the end, my choice was uh, to stay here. Yeah. So I always uh, have to remain for my first choice. I don't know if it's right and correct yeah. in English. Yeah. Yeah. So I think um, it sounds like you're quite decisive. Um, and then even if you give consideration to alternatives, you always seem to come back to that original thought, that original feeling. Yeah, I'm quite impulsive. Quite impulsive. Yeah, yeah. as well as my dancing or the way I approach dancing. Uh, I, I, need, I need to have those, those, uh, those strong feelings, otherwise it's not worth it. Yeah. And tell me about those strong feelings and about that impulsiveness. How does that... Uh, sort of translate into how you approach dance and how, how you approach the stage and your performances? Well, I believe uh, what I do, it's meant to change someone and change myself. So um, if I'm not following my, my impulses, then it's just very complicated. You cannot program those things. Uh, we, I mean, we perform... And people go to theater to be touched in a way, um, not by not touched by watching something extraordinary. It's just much more. Uh, it comes from the soul, I believe. Yeah. And the same way goes the other way around. Uh, I need to be, you know, one of the greatest feeling of uh, of dancing or performing. 
it's just the emptiness after. If you reach this point, personally, if I reach this point of emptiness, it's a success. Then I can I just leave everything out. I can refill myself with something new. And yeah, it's sort of a, a way back and forth between audience and you. And, and do you feel that emptiness every time that you come off the stage or is this about a new role or when does that happen for you? Well, uh, of course, it doesn't happen every night, uh, even though I try. I mean, most of the time, uh, let's say if, if you put it in a range of uh, percentage, to reach 100% is always, you know, you know, dancers and it's like, oh, you know, this didn't go quite well or this didn't go quite well or but it's I don't know it's just a small part of the the whole performance experience uh, of course you need to have a great technique to be able to just uh, leave it uh, don't think about it and add layers on top yeah so of course I don't experience this uh, emptiness every night or uh, in the same way let's say mm -hmm. I do experience it but not in the same way mm -hmm. So you're coming to London. Tell us mm -hmm. about the triple bill that you're performing over here. So it's kind of, um, I mean, three master's works from, from Forsyth. Uh, first one is uh, In the Middle, created for uh, Paris Opera, I believe. That is 80, one of my favorite pieces. <laughs> 89, yeah, something like that, 1989. Yeah. Which we've been perform, pr performing here uh, for now 12 years. I did. Um, of course, the company in 12 years changed a lot, so the cast, it changed a lot. But uh, uh, even though we perform it for such a long time, there is always a um, new approach, new... There is dancers coming in, going out, which bring new things, new energies, new... A lot of new things. So quite a change in business. It's kind of old, uh, which... I mean, I don't know, if you see it from the outside, I, I don't find it all at all. It's no, something that I no. always, yeah, quite um, adapting to the, um, to the era, not somehow. Absolutely. Yeah, we just worked recently again with Foresight uh, last week, which is, is very attached to us somehow with the, with the company. And uh, is always trying to give us, a, you know, just forget that, go there, change this, go, you know, make it live, make it uh, fresh every time. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it will be boring for, for us, for the audience. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's kind of hard. It's a, it's a piece that has been danced for, I don't know how many companies in the world. Uh, most of them. Yeah. yeah. So we want to make it uh, our, our way. We want to make it uh, give our uh, signature to it, no? And, and what, what do you think that signature is? How do you make it your own? I mean, I believe we have really uh, strong group of people here, of um, personalities, and which they will bring that for sure. And at the same time, we have quite a strong connection with Forsyth. So we, that means we work with him a lot of, lot of, lot of times, which gives you another... Um, not a better or a worse one. It's just different understanding of, of his work. Yeah. Or at least you have a better range of, um, of perspective of his work, yeah? By working with a person uh, more often. Yeah. And, and what's that process like working with him in the studio? How does that work? Well, it's, uh, it's, quite, it's always fun. Um, it's someone very, I mean, hard to work with. In, uh, in terms of, uh, you know ex exactly what he wants to bring this time mm -hmm. on the stage. Uh, he, knows, he knows exactly where we're going. So we're going to Sanders Worlds. Uh, he knows where audience will be expecting. He knows where he wants to present there for this audience. Uh, it's, not the same, it's not the same as if we go to Paris Opera. And so this is fun for us as well to change. I mean, it's not that it's changing a lot, but... Um, it's just about uh, bringing something new for yourself and for the audience. And otherwise, it could be boring to perform this piece for 12 years and, uh, and again and again and the same and repeating yourself. So he brings this freshness all the time to the, to the work uh, when you have him in the studio. I mean, we have uh, great ballet masters, uh, 
very connected to him, to his work, very uh, um, at the, how do you say, at the, with the lastest information, everything you can get. But uh, when you have him, um, it gives this um, extra thing. Plus, it's fun to work with him, yeah. Well, it must be quite an incredible experience to have such, um, <clears throat> that time with him. It must yeah, be. The, what I find great, I mean, I, as I say, I'm, I'm for 12 years now, a complete 12 years with the company. And he came here since the first time. Actually, our first program, uh, he was uh, in the middle, was uh, one of the pieces. So I've been working with him for a long time of period. And what I like from him is uh, I never met the same foresight, same will all the time. It's, uh, every time he comes, of course, his life goes on as well. And he approaches differently uh, his work, his way of presenting his work, his um, um, message for uh, in dance, no? And he brings this to us. Yeah. And what aside from the sort of the the tweaks or the changes that have been made to um, made for the pieces for Saddlers specifically, mm. what else? What sort of what what has he brought differently this time to your previous work with him to these pieces? Um, I mean, what uh, we we have worked with him in uh, three different pieces. So for each of them, it's uh, it's very specific. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we bring in as well enemy, for example, which is based a lot in uh, improvisations. Yeah. There's a lot of impro, impro uh, um, dancing. So for that, I don't know, it just uh, uh, brought totally different ideas. We sort of went as well a lot to the basics okay. of uh, improving, of uh, studying um, improvisation technologies, basically of uh, techniques. And so go basically to the basics, yeah, which uh, allows you as well to rethink, refresh and take it in someone else, uh, some, some other place, yeah. Not just go to your uh, comfort zone, let's say. You just uh, break this, uh, this thing out. And then the middle, uh, for, for middle, yeah. I mean, I'm not dancing middle uh, okay. in, in, in Sunday's Wells. I do the other two pieces. I've been uh, watching rehearsals and, and involved with them, but uh, in those rehearsals. But I would say he was just... Uh, Bringing back a little bit at the moment the um, classicism of the of the piece, and basically um, I remember one phrase that he says one of the first days he would say, "If you present to the audience that you can do that, and then you know you can every time can can you can move and oh wow yeah but after uh, five minutes you're boring I mean you you will get bored of uh, dancing and watching." So he was just basically saying to us, go from the the pieces made like that, from really strict classicism to slowly breaking it to where it became middle. So um, I think he really brought it to the very beginning. And yeah, you know, yeah. you suddenly can read, uh, okay, well, I recognize this step. And then suddenly this step is just broken into something else. But you can recognize it because I showed it to you before in a different way. Not just, uh, you know, I'm cool, I'm dancing, foresight. Mm. Go, I think in those three pieces go to the roots of, um, of his work, yeah, in totally different ways. Yeah. And it sounds obviously like <clears throat> you really enjoy dancing um, his work. Yeah, um, I enjoy what, him. And what does, and it, what, does it, what does it feel like to, to dance his work? What does it feel like to perform it? What do you personally take from his work? Well, it's a challenge. It's a personal challenge. Uh, it's always someone challenging you. And I will say that it's quite a, it's challenging you musically, uh, physically, and artistically. Uh, those three ways, the most important ones. I mean, yeah. You couldn't ask for more than, can you really? <laughs> as a, no, as an artist and as a, a dancer. No, no. And when you're in London, what are you looking forward to the most? How long are you here for? Uh, I don't really know. I think we are there for... I mean, we have three performances. I'm just going uh, to do something else before some performances. Then I fly to London and then I go back to somewhere else to do another performances. 
So it's kind of a, a lot of things at the moment. But I think we are uh, four or five days in London. Uh, I just look forward to be uh, arrived to London and focus in London. Uh, yeah, once I mean, sometimes it's funny. You are uh, with a lot of work with the this and this and this and this, and then you just need to be at the time and the, in the place to enjoy this moment. No, now we're working a lot in London. I'm working a lot in different things, but uh, I just looking forward to be for that. Yeah. To be to be in the moment. To be in the moment, yeah. To perform, yeah, basically. You mentioned before that um, having been with the company twelve years, coming into mm. your thirteenth season, that there's been ups and downs. Mm. That's natural for any um, any long term endeavor. Yeah. Can you tell tell us about some of the highlights in in your career that you've had so far, or moments that have been remarkable or special to you? Oof. Tough question. Uh, <laughs> I mean, well, not, not tough. It's just uh, there's been a lot, a lot. Uh, I don't know if I would say something to that. Is uh, I have many great moments and many bad moments, but uh, neither I believe uh, I don't get too excited when I'm uh, feeling great, and I don't get too excited or too uh, depressive when I when I'm down. Um, it's not true. None of those high and low points. Uh, I don't. I don't believe that they're the the true of it. It's just uh, you need to go through those to find the middle line all the time. Uh, very necessary to touch high and low points. But I went through so many. Like in uh, one season, I I experienced great things, great performances, bad performances. Uh, not meaning that bad performances can be a it's not a it's not a bad thing as well it's just a, you know it's live performance um i don't know i just been through so many ups and downs so i cannot say okay that was a great moment that was mm. a that was a really bad moment i cannot i cannot yeah. uh, i i don't have those it's yeah. just a, in in a in a year i go through through a lot of those of course, there is years that you go through, you know, when there's injuries and uh, you need to go through that. And uh, I will say for us, it's just quite a, it's just mentally, you need to be very strong. And and you you, you always feel when you are in a, in the worst moment you think you can be and and you go through that and it just makes you... A little bit stronger, and uh, it's just about that all the time. I I, I find it. Yeah. 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 It, it... I mean, I, if I would say something in in those twelve years, uh, worst moments for me was injuries. Yeah, I have to say. Tell us about the injuries. Well, I mean, I mean, I I went through a lot uh, hard ones. I was uh, I just broke my foot twice. Goodness. Uh, Fifth metatars. tars. Uh, yeah. And how did you do that? <laughs> well, first time it was quite funny. It was I was just doing the death of Mercutio, so not really dancing. It's just a stupid step. Um, broke my foot. Yeah, Goodness. first time. Actually, uh, first time I broke it, it was kind of okay mentally. You know, uh, every time you're working, uh, you don't find time to relax your mind. You always thinking you need to do this and this and this and this. First time I find myself injured that way, I was, okay, I don't have anything to do. I just, I cannot work properly. So I will just take time for myself. So I actually enjoyed quite this, uh, let's say it was a couple of months. And it was very good healing process for um, not my professional life, my personal life. So it was a good point. Then after that, I came back. Uh, and then two months later, I broke it again in the same place. <laughs> Second time was not that fun, yeah. And right after that, uh, I had an accident, biking, stupid one, and I broke my wrist, uh, destroyed completely. Okay. So that was two years of um, a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of hard, uh, easy normal moment, yeah. How, and how and how did you that I mean, two years is a long time to go through injury and pain and rehab and to take time off and not perform and come back 
How you mentioned, you know, being mentally strong. How do you get through and maintain and stay strong and, and positive and get through that? Well, a lot of the times, uh, of course, uh, you need help from people. Uh, many of the times, yeah, you you are able to reach to start at a certain point, and then there uh, you will find a, a strong wall that. Uh, of course, you can break it alone, but um, I don't know. I, I find quite a quite a good advice to be open for help, and I mean, from physiotherapist uh, till great talkings with people um, did really help me out. Uh, you know, otherwise, sometimes I don't know. It's the same uh, if you try to train yourself, and at a certain point, you're like, oh, you need someone in front. Of, for one moment, it's like, come on, just uh, go. You just need this small impulse to keep on going. So I, for me, it was really important to have uh, uh, my close group of people plus a uh, physiotherapist uh, close to me in when I when I was needing those uh, those small impulses. Yeah, and. You have to clearly, as a dancer, work extraordinarily hard. It's a long, um, well, not not that long actually. It can be short, but <laughs> <laughs> it is a lot of long days and, and long nights. Mm. How do you stay motivated, um, and what sort of keeps you you going? I mean, we are. I I, f I feel quite lucky to be the place that I am in the company uh, because we have. And incredibly, I mean, the diversity of repertoire that we have here is uh, enormous. We go from the most classical pieces till uh, working recently with uh, Hoffa Schachter. Uh, oh, I love to, him. We just premiered uh, it was second of June. Tomorrow we have a show from him again, from Hoffa. What, so, what are you showing tomorrow out of interest? He actually created for us, which is uh, wow. quite a quite a big thing. Yeah, he created something for us uh, that we worked for. Uh, we started in December, uh, January. Then, you know, he's, I don't know if you know him a little bit, but he's uh, incredibly busy with schedule and yes. stuff like that. So he was Super busy. here for one week, then off for another week, then coming again after four months. So anyway, uh, mm. huge, great experience to work with him. Uh, so yeah, we work from we go from Bayader to Swan Lake till Forsyth till Hofisch till uh, Killian uh, Inger I don't know like we touch a lot of things yeah. and that's one thing keeps you inspired uh, of course you don't get bored mm -hmm. but I think that the the most I mean strongest motivation you need to find in yourself um through enjoying those uh, those processes, it's just uh, about letting everything that you know out and letting new information in, and of course without forgetting the old one. But uh, you cannot go with any. I find if you go to new creation or you go to work with uh, someone else in a in a new piece, a new process, uh, new or uh, resetting a ballet, you need to be in a in a, I don't know, in a white zone in your in your brain that you can add colors into it. You cannot use the same colors as before, yeah. And I think if you, it's not always uh, easy to find this uh, white paper again to color it. But if you try to find this every time you initiate a new process, then I think you're you're good to go, yeah. To not get uh, too bored or lose inspiration, which is quite easy as well. In, uh, in this in this job, yeah. I read um, a quote from Aaron Watkins, mm -hmm. um, the artistic director, mm -hmm. and uh, on the company's Facebook page actually, which says that the company is breaking down the borders that traditionally exist between classical and contemporary dance, and redefining dance as a culmination of both, which I thought was a, a wonderful statement and. You mentioned there this incredible repertoire and the opportunities as an artist you get um, to experience. Where do you feel most comfortable within within that spectrum of repertoire between you know, the purely classical on one end and the hofesh on the other? Um, 
I mean, I really enjoyed both. Uh, if I will have to not choose, because I will not choose uh, one or the other. No. Um, I think I will feel more. Co- I mean, I will feel more comfortable in the let's say modern size of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but still, I, I enjoy to do Basilio, uh, Romeo, all this kind of uh, all this kind of classical work, which I think is very important. Once you can do it, you are in a in a shape to do it, in a condition to do it, and um, you have to go through that. Yeah. But uh, I think the the sentence that uh, I don't I don't say is just uh, it is totally right. Uh, I mean, you, you can believe that a dancer can can go from doing hoffish uh, one night and uh, now we go Sanders Wells and do in the middle, and then after that you go to do Prince Siegfried. Uh, it's wonderful. Of course, it is hard. Uh, Mentally and physically, sometimes it is very, very hard physically. I mean, the um, anatomy of, uh, I would not difference between modern and classical dance. I, I don't know what is the difference between, but I don't know, from Hoffish work till Killian, till uh, uh, then suddenly go to White Heights and uh, Prince Sifris. The um, it's, it's very different uh, anatomically talking. So yeah. muscles that you need for something, sometimes you are... Uh, kind of ground it in the floor and your thighs are like that huge, which mm-hmm. you don't need that for a classical ballet. So it's quite an experience sometimes to, as well as uh, for him as a director, you need to be able to uh, keep your dancers, um, of course, motivated, which he does uh, by doing that, but uh, as well in a, in a healthy uh, place, physically. Uh, your principal dancers, I, I mean, no principal dancers, I mean, every, everybody. Uh, mm. Because in this company, which it's, I actually I find great as well, uh, of course, we have a lot of ranks and um, it's a um, classical structure company, let's, let's call it like that. But um, you have choices. I've been here when I was 21 years old doing uh, my f- first year, uh, second year doing theme variations, doing... Uh, a lot of principal roles, rubies and things like that. So if I would not have those choices, I mean, those um, opportunities to do this, probably I would not be with that background at the moment, yeah? So he's quite uh, letting people try, fail, try, fail. Yeah, it's uh, quite a good vision for a, for a company. Absolutely. For a group, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and just a couple of final questions. Uh, with that amazing repertoire, do you have a favourite role that you love to dance over and over and over again or something that you would really still love to tackle that you haven't yet had the opportunity to do so? Um, one of my favourite roles, I'll say, would be Romeo, which I did two productions of uh, in two different productions of it. Um, what do you love about that? I love the, I mean, the interpretation of the, of the character. I love the, it's, it's a journey you go from, a, from having quite an innocent, uh, inside till just being, I don't know, uh, in no time. In, I mean, for us, it's two hours, well, yeah. two hours and a half. <laughs> but as well, in the in this history, it, it, it happened quite fast. Yeah, yeah. it's... Uh, yeah. Um, intense. Thing, mm. Very intense things that happen to someone in life in, a, in quite a big amount of time. It just happened quite quickly. And then you end up, in a, you end up being a different person. And uh, so the the spectrum of uh, of of characters inside the same character, I I really like it there. Plus, I uh, I really 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 enjoy the music. For me, one of the mm-hmm. most important things is music. I mean, there is a of course the Prokofiev uh, version. There is a, as well a prologue from Tchaikovsky. Um, but I find the music is just extraordinary. It's just uh, I, I really think you can just hear the music and it will tell you the story exactly. So, it's and it's not so many times happening in that way. I mean, I find the music quite a, it's very important for, a, for our, uh, our art form. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So 
Um, one of the questions that I love to ask at the end, and particularly um, you know, being a male ballet dancer as well, and uh, a role model for many young young boys or men out there, um, given your incredible career, and you've seemed very happy with the company, you've been there a long time. What advice would you give to other aspiring young male dancers who um, would love to be able to have a career that you have? Do you have any words of advice that you would pass on? Ooh, that's such a responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe words of wisdom that you live by that you think are helpful. I mean, I think it's very important to set a goal for for yourself uh, in terms of um, of short, medium, long distance. And then something it really works for me. Uh, I always I don't do it in a uh, how you say I don't uh, precisely uh, what I want to say. Uh, basically, I just draw a circle. Um, and I, I say, okay, uh, everything inside my circle, I can, I can do that. Everything out, outside my circle, I just, uh, I cannot do it for the moment. So I basically concentrate on what I can do on my circle at the time that I'm uh, in. And slowly, of course, your circle will just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, I think this is quite a quite important um, approach for uh, for things. Not you need ambitious, uh, you need to be ambitious, but uh, not too much. You always need to really measure your balances somehow. It's, I'm not someone that I did really, and I'm, I'm quite uh, impulsive, as I told you mm. in the beginning. So um, it's finding those two sides between that and, uh, and, the, um, and the passion, the craziness of, uh, of letting yourself go in, in, in interpreting uh, your dancing, your characters, your... Uh, Whatever you want to do, yeah, it's, yeah. Well, I think that's really, um, really interesting advice, and I have to say, I've never, I've never heard anyone describe um, this sort of circle of which you can con influence or be responsible for. Or have. I actually, really I actually heard it from a. a I, I didn't invent this. A, okay. This sort of a thing, I heard it from a chef, um, oh. and he was saying. That basically what he does is he um, he actually does it, I think. And then he draws a circle and then, you know, there is always, they say, yeah, you can, uh, you, you can do a lot in this world. And, uh, but if everybody in this, uh, um, in the life will just uh, focus on his own circle and okay, my, what I can do is it goes still here. I cannot do more because uh, I don't have the possibilities or I don't have the energy to do it. Or, uh, but if, if everybody will be concerned about his own circle and make sure that everything on his own circle is placed in the right, uh, the right place, it's going to be a totally different thing. So it is quite a, a collective thing. I mean, it's quite an individual thing, mm. but as well applies to... And don't forget, we are in a, in in my case, we are we work in a company. Yeah. So we are uh, sixty five dancers, more or less. I, I sometimes some years is more or less, mm -hmm. and you need to drive those uh, personalities together uh, with the same goal, and this is not easy. Mm -hmm. So if each of us we just take care of our circle and take care of the other one circle, then I think you can do a uh, lot of great things. Yeah. And in that quite a, you know, that's quite a sizable company and you're a principal dancer um, and as you're taking care of your circle and those within your circle yeah. as well, um, how, do, how do you on a sort of, you know, reg regular or day-to-day -day basis sort of take care of the, the younger dancers who are coming through the ranks and starting their journey. Do you get to interact with them um, um, yeah, as you? Yeah, I mean, in the in sense of uh, interacting personally, we, we interact. Uh, there is no, we don't have so much this sort of um, hierarchy in the sense of uh, they will talk to me a different way. I will hate it. No, no way. Uh, but anyway, it's not a, it's not our company culture. 
it's not a, it doesn't go this way. So every, I mean, the only thing I can do is just uh, do my job as best as I can, and then uh, if you're smart enough, you can just take as much as you 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 can from that. And the same the other way around. I you cannot believe how much I learned from younger people who have this uh, real power, um, uh, which sometimes you you can lose, or uh, I mean, everybody can lose all these things. So I think it's so important to just feed each other. And I mean, I arrived here uh, to be a principal dancer by being many years and uh, and performing and doing and doing and working. Uh, so we don't have as well this sort of thing that, um, uh, I don't know, a, a young guy with uh, 20 years old doing one principal role would become principal dancer. Uh, I think Aaron's philosophy, uh, philosophy of a uh, principal dancer is... Um, it, have, it contains quite a big perspective. Uh, it's not just happening from one day to the other. So I think we we really learn from each other here. In a, from yeah. Well, it sounds like a wonderful company, and I can't wait to see you perform. At we have as well our bad things. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm happy to it, discuss it those if you got the time. <laughs> it's just uh, like. Like everywhere else, there is, um, but of course the the balance is uh, is very very positive. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. There is no company or family or organization in the world that's perfect. Um, no, I'm sure. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, as you say, there yeah. are there are the good and the not so good, and and mm. uh, I think it's part of life now, isn't it? That's just yeah. the way it is. Well, hope to see you in London soon. I will definitely be uh, at the um, the. Premier, well, the performance, um, I think it's on the 21st of June. You're here until the 23rd of June. Um, so those who are listening and want to learn some more, just uh, check out um, the Semper Opera Ballet's uh, website and uh, social media as well. And you can grab tickets at saddlersworlds.com. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. See you later. Okay, done. Let me just stop Great. recording.